So yes, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, respective to your time zones. So yes, today uh, we will talk to you about how QWERT works efficiently with the use of Killer Coda. So before that, a quick introduction of myself. I am Mia Palodia. I am pursuing uh, BE in Computer Engineering, and I am a final year student. And also, I am working as a Software Quality Engineering intern at Red Hat. And now I would like to request to Adam to give a brief intro. Cool. Thanks, Mihir. Um, yeah, I'm Adam Gardner. I work in the OSPO, um, the Open Source Program Office at Dynatrace. So my work really centers around um, the intersection between Dynatrace as a product and everything that we're doing in the open source space, but also um, particularly with observability um, and the security space. So um, I'm not going to give too much away from my little bit, which is You'll be glad to hear, thankfully, small. But um, yeah, Killer Coda and, and Cuba as the driver for this um, for this work has been absolutely fundamental to uh, what, what we've been doing uh, in the open source space and internally. So yeah, back to you, Meha. Thank you. So yes, let's have a quick look at the agenda. First, we will look over the main two things like killer code and cube word what it is and then we will move forward with the additional features which are provided by killer coda then we will see how actually vms work with the cube word then we will see killer coda uh, uses uh, cube word the way how it is using then how cube word can run on killer coda and why killer coda is only being used with word right so we will see why it works amazingly so fast and at last we will see how actually we use cube word and killer coda together in our daily life so yes let's start with the introduction first so basically cube word is an open source project that allows users to run virtual machines on a kubernetes cluster providing the benefits of virtualization alongside the benefits of Kubernetes, such as automatic uh, scaling, self-healing, and rolling updates. And Killer Coda is a company or say organization which provides a commercial product that builds on top of KubeWord, adding additional features and capability to the open source project. Now, Killer Coda product provides a number of additional features that are not present in the open source version of KubeWord. So let's discuss them one by one. So one of the main key features of Killer Coda is improved performance. So the company has optimized the performance of KubeWord by allowing users to run VMs with lower overhead and higher performance. So this is achieved by using advanced techniques such as memory overcommitment and CPU pinning, like which allows VMs to make better use of the resources available on the host. Now, this can result in a significant improvement in the number of VMs that can be run on a single cluster. Uh, as well as an improvement in the performance of an individual VMs. Now, Killer Coda also provides uh, the functionality of improved scalability. The company has added scalability enhancements to KubeWord by allowing users to run more VMs on a single cluster and to more easily manage large number of VMs. Now, this can be achieved through the use of advanced techniques such as live migration, which allows VMs to be moved between hosts while they are still running, and the usage of shared storage, which allows multiple VMs to access the same data. Another key feature of Killer Coda is enhanced security. Now, it uh, it has an additional security features to KubeWord, such as the ability to encrypt the data stored on the virtual disk and to secure the communication between the VMs and the host. And it also provides secure access to the VMs. Now, this can help to 
protect against data breaches and unauthorized access and can also ensure that VMs are only accessible to the authorized users. And there is another feature which is uh, highly useful like enhanced management. Management is important thing. So Killer Coda provides a web-based management interface that allows users to easily manage and monitor their VMs and to perform common tasks such as creating and deleting VMs and starting and stopping VMs. Now this can help to simplify the management of the VMs and can make it easier for users to keep the track of their VMs. And it also ensures that they are running correctly. And additionally, Killer Coda products uh, product provides a centralized monitoring and the management console, which can provide a real time visibility into the performance and health of the VMs and the resources they are using. So this can help to quickly identify and resolve issues and can help to ensure that the VMs are always running at the optimal performance. So now last uh, feature is uh, Killer Coda provides the advanced networking feature now which includes the firewalls, load balancers and VPNs that are not present in the open source version of KubeWord, right? So these features can help to improve the security and performance of the network and can make it easier for users to connect VMs to other resources such as databases and other VMs. Now with Killer Coda, users can create custom virtual networks, use firewalls and load balancers and even establish VPN connections between VMs and the other resources. So after all uh, summarizing all the functionality, Killer Coda's product extends the capabilities of KubeWord by adding performance, optimization, security enhancements, scalability improvements, enhanced management, and advanced networking features. Now this enhancements make it easier for customers to run and manage their VMs on top of the Kubernetes. Now, after looking at the advanced features, now we actually uh, have a look at uh, how VMs work with KubeWord, right? So, KubeWord provides uh, Kubernetes resources like virtual machine instance. Creating this resource will then cause a pod and connected VM to be created automatically. Now, this is amazing because it means we can create VMs like normal pods. But how does this even work? Because let's imagine we have a VMs. On this, we install Kubernetes. Inside Kubernetes, we install KubeWord. Where will KubeWord then create the new VMs? Treat like pods. Now let's have a look at the following image. Now, in the image, we see a one node Kubernetes cluster. Pod 1 and pod 2 are normal pods. Pod 3 and pod 4 are the KubeWord pods. Now, VM pod 3 and VM pod 4 are nested VMs and the KubeWord will communicate with KVM to create this. KubeWord needs hardware virtualization support. This way, it's possible to create nested VMs on a VM. Nested virtualization is possible on most dedicated servers and also cloud providers like GCP. So after the uh, uh, overview of the KubeWord working, let's see how it is uh, Killer Coda use that thing, KubeWord, okay? So, uh, custom Killer Coda operator, which is written in Golang, communicates with the KubeWord through the normal Kubernetes way by creating and deleting resources inside the cluster. Now, if you open up, for example, the Ubuntu Playground, uh, let's have a look. This is the Ubuntu Playground, right? Which I have linked. So yes, what it does is like it's a, a request will be sent 
to the Kubernetes cluster near your location. And inside that, Kubernetes clusters run KubeWord together with the, with the custom applications, right? So the killer coda operator receives a request like new open to VM and creates a new virtual machine instance resource. Now this resource is available once KubeWord is installed. This will make KubeWord create a nested VM. Now when the user closes the browser tab, the connection abort is sent to the killer coda operator, which simply deletes the virtual machine instance resource. This will cause KubeWord to actually delete all underlying resources and the nested VM. Now, everybody will be thinking like how KubeWord can run on killer coda, right? So as we have seen here, this image says all. What it says, it says KubeWord runs on killer coda. Killer coda runs on KubeWord. Now the answer is relatively simple. Killer coda provides completely isolated VMs. Generally, it doesn't matter if you take a GCP, AWS, or Killer Coda VM. You just install, for example, K3S on it and then KubeWord. But on Killer Coda VMs, nested virtualization isn't supported. For this cases, KubeWord provides software simulation, which is great for testing, but probably uh, too slow for production usage. You can have a look at the software simulation. Uh, it uses the KMU, but uh, for uh, depth understanding, you can follow along this document, right? We can get back to our slides. So this was the basic overview, like how it is running on Killer Coda. Now, why uh, Killer Coda is only put it between the cube word? So, Killer Coda always keeps a certain number of VMs running, like for example, Ubuntu or Kubernetes. Now we call this preheating. Now, if you open a Killer Coda scenario and a preheated VM is available, it will be assigned directly to you without the wait time. And if there are no preheated VMs available, then a new one will be created on demand. It just takes 20 seconds to create a new running plus ready Ubuntu environment and just 30 seconds to create the new running plus ready two nodes Kubernetes cluster. Now the biggest speed and the reliability factor is probably that we stay away from volumes that is PV and PVC which are the Kubernetes concepts. So yes, the volume creation can be slow and often unreliable. But if you need to create and delete thousands of VMs in short time, you need to get rid of any troublemaking components. Now KubeWord works very well together with the CDI. What is CDI? Uh, like it is containerized data importer. And if you start your journey, you should definitely use it. Now, it will probably also work great in your production use case, but on Killer Coda, uh, they have decided not to use CDI or volumes at all because uh, they are using uh, the customized cube word version for that. Now, for speed and the deeper integration, uh, they maintain a customized cube word version. Now, among all other things, this customized version allows us to create the VPNs between the VMs. This is for example, necessary in multi-node environments like the Kubernetes playground. Uh, we can uh, have a look at it once. This is the simple playground with the Kubernetes installed version, right? So it, it will uh, give you the multi-node environment where we want the VMs. And more on how to build the cube word is, can also be seen. You can follow along the steps and you are good to go. 
So yes, now I would like to hand over to Adam. Thanks, Mia. If you uh, stop sharing, I'll share my screen. There you go. Uh, share the entire screen. Give me a thumbs up if you can see that you'll be getting inception at the moment, but has anyone got my screen yet? Yes, we can see your screen. Cool. All righty. So um, I, I obviously neither me or, or I are related to Killer Kodo. We're not employed by them. Uh, we're just fans of, of what they're doing and, and frankly, what, what, you have built with with cubevert um so i came across killer coder looking for ways to provide simplified demo environments to be honest um i had some things to teach people or we 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 wanted to get information out there and you know the f the, the first thing you you see on all these tutorials is git clone cd into a directory and then and then run a shell script Usually, and I just thought, why are we doing that? Why are we peppering developers or, or people's machines with, you know, stuff they're not going to use or they're going to use once, maybe, to to try something out, and then everything else breaks because of all the interdependencies um, from previous tutorials. Can we give them a clean room each time they they sort of spin up? Um, and so I came across Catacoda obviously, but at the time, Catacoder had shut down. So then I came across Killer Code, and they were really positioning themselves as a um, Catacoder replacement. So obviously, I dug into it, and I was just blown away by the simplicity. But really, I, it, the reason I'm here at, what, 3 a.m. in Australia is just to say thank you to the CubeVert community. Um, it's it's really incredible what you've built, um, and I know the first time I talked about it, people said, "Well, why why do we need that?" And this is one of the really good use cases. And the other really good use case is as a um, migration path or an easy way to get into Kubernetes. And and indeed, you can stay with VMs on Kubernetes if you want. There's there's nothing wrong with that. Um, people understand VMs. They they conceptually have a a model to work with and especially when you live in 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 this in the world of containers you forget that most a, a lot of it folk aren't there yet you know they're they're comfortable with vms so if we can give them that comfortable path um so yeah massive massive fan anyway regardless so um as meho was saying there's a bit of a sandwich going on so you can actually go to the killer coder homepage. Um, and learn kubevert. I'm not sure if, if someone from the project did this or kubevert did this, but you just click on, you know, kubevert and you get tutorials. Now, um, the way this works, this killercoder.com slash kubevert is basically backed by a Git repo. Um, you can actually see it here. I oh, know that's the link to your Git repo, obviously, never mind. Uh, but then you go into a particular tutorial and we're basically navigating into a folder. And that's it. You've got your effectively a VM on the right and a markdown based tutorial steps that you can kind of start and walk through on the left. Um, and these code snippets, you sort of annotate them with little curly brackets to say, Yes, they're executable, um, and as soon as you know you click it, you it, it copies and pastes and executes. So, I mean, you know, for someone looking to build demo environments or, or give someone a just, you know, an idiot's guide to something, it's it's just it, it's incredible. But none of this would be even doable without Kubevert, uh, because if you think about this. We're giving someone a VM on the internet. We don't know them. We don't trust them. So uh, we need that encapsulation with VMs. So without Kubevert, Killer Coder wouldn't even exist. 
So that's that's really what I'm I'm trying to get at here. So how does all of this work under the hood? I mean, yes, we can go through and we can actually, you know, I'll, I'll just click some of this as, as I talk. Um, but let's show you, uh, for example, Open Feature, which is a project I work on. Um, it's an open source standard for feature flagging. Show you the technical stuff. So here's the repository. Um, we have four, at the moment, four tutorials. And if I show you, for example, the flag D demo, it's really very simple. You get an index.json file which specifies things like the title of the tutorial, the description, and then an array of the steps, you know, and uh, and and how each step works. And then they um, offer this concept of background and foreground. So background is a shell script that runs, as it says, in the background. And foreground is something, of course, that runs in the foreground. So if I, uh, so what you're seeing here, um, if there was a foreground Adam? script, this would start running. Yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. We we can see just your browser, so I'm not sure if you are sharing something else. Ah, uh, can you not see the Kubevert UI? Uh, let me let me try sharing again. Sorry. Uh, share screen. Share the entire screen. So if I if I share that, what do you see right now? Yes, now we can see it. Okay, and if I really... flick across, mm -hmm. do you see a JSON file? Yes. Awesome. Sorry about that. So, no worries. More uh, very quick recap of that. This is the markdown on the left hand side. Um, it's a tutorial that you can step through, and it has the executable code snippets that uh, I was talking about. So um, on the right, obviously, is the terminal. That is a VM that is running on, uh, let me get this right. It's a VM running on Kubernetes, which is running, actually, on top of that is running kubevert. You can install kubevert on the VM that is running inside. You know, it's kind of, layers and layers of kubevert going on here it's, it's pretty clever um the way this all works so if i flick to the json just someone say yes they can see that no no json yet it's a bit small but we can see jason okay Zoom in a little bit. Hopefully that's better. Yes, it's better. Cool. Um, so yeah, this JSON document is the outline for a tutorial. So you, this is something you write. You give it a, uh, a title, for example. You give it a description of the tutorial. And then you build up the number of steps. So the steps refer to the markdown that you saw on the left-hand panel. Um, and of course, then whatever you write as markdown just appears on the left hand panel. The background script, of course, runs in the background. So, so hidden to the user, and there is an equivalent foreground script. Now, if you provide a foreground script, that of course effectively is just copy and pasted automatically for you and ran in the shell window that you see. So I use the foreground scripts to um, install install my custom stuff on um, on the base image, effectively, on the base VM. So then I have a shell script that runs and, and sets up my environment as soon as I launch the browser window. And then it's really as simple as I have to write my markdown to guide my users through whatever I'm trying to do. And at each step, I provide you know, with 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 the clickable instructions if they need to do something in the markdown, and also um, you know the the foreground stuff. Now, the one thing that um, 
Oh, there, there's an example of, of a foreground script there. And they're just standard shell scripts. You can do anything you like. So the one thing that Killer Coder is, is weak at um, is tracking and, and, and statistics, frankly. So um, what I've done, most of the steps you'll see, you know, step five background, step six background. And what I do there is I use curl because it's the only thing, uh, you know, ironically coming from Dynatrace and observability platform, we have a JavaScript rum agent that can be put in the browser that could give me all sorts of useful information about visitors. Of course, I don't have access to do that on Killer Coda, um, reasonably so, I would suggest, for security. Um, so I'm stuck with just a curl request. So I every time a step loads, I send a curl request to a backend just to say we've had one person um, there's no personally identifiable information at all. Uh, there can't be because I don't know. Uh, but I, I'm just basically pinging and saying, yes, we've had one hit of this step of the tutorial. And it's a very rudimentary way of me saying, actually, this tutorial is being used. It's worth maintaining. Or, you know, no one's using it. We can probably retire it. Um, it, it, you know, it didn't work. No one, no one cared about it as much as we did. So let's, let's not maintain it. Um, yeah. And, and I mean, this is, this is my repo. So, or, or this is the, the repo. So we are completely, um, able to generate as many killer coded tutorials as possible. Technically the way it works, as soon as the commit to a particular branch that you provide I just use main, but you can use any branch you like. That then fires a webhook back to Killer Coder, and Killer Coder goes and syncs their um, scripts and their their stuff in the back end, whatever happens. So that basically, with a with a gap of about twenty or thirty seconds, you get a new a new tutorial. Um, so, with all of that said, how have I actually uh, and and what have I I built stuff on? So. I came across Killer Coda when I was looking for the captain tutorials. I then expanded it to open feature, as you saw. Um, let me just make this bigger. Then I, I, I took that Adam? to the rest of, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, yeah. but we have one more minute and no. we need to wrap it up. So please do so. Cool. Okay. No worries. So there's, I, I basically, in a nutshell, did a lot of tutorials, uh, not only for open source, but also for security topics that I'm trying to teach inside Dynatrace, teach other staff members like SQL injection, and also how to actually ingest stuff. It's a, it's a nice way to provide a clean room for our users at Dynatrace. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Back to you, Miha. Sorry, I took a bit too long. No, so yes, that's thank all you so about much, both of you, for your presentation. Yes. Uh, we will not have time for uh, the Q and A, uh, but uh, if people have any questions, so please put them into the chat, and Meha and uh, Adam can answer that. So thank you, thank you, Meha and Adam again.